everyone! Today there is another installment of the Fantasy Ranger costume, and I am not alone. I am joined by Robin, who's my fellow player in that group. Today we're going to look at making a leather gauntlet, which was prompted by an in-game idea. Given that my character is an alchemist, and specifically a poisoner by trade, it seemed logical to have a device that allowed me to treat myself if I accidentally end up getting poisoned with something that even our enhanced metabolisms can't handle. And the idea that came from that was to have a gauntlet that well, can inject that poison that we can both wear, as we're both the same kind of weird poison-fueled species. <laughs> and to make things fun, the crafter we asked to make us one, in-game, made two. So we can both wear one. Which also brings us to our idea of today. How do you make LARP props and costume parts that can fit multiple people? We want to make this gauntlet in such a way that we can actually interchange them. There will be two gauntlets of the same set. So even though, well, we have somewhat different proportions, I'm really small. The idea is that we can both wear it and we can even switch left and right. So that's basically what we're going to do today. The first part of that is sketching out the idea because we are both letter crafters and we are actually going to individually make our own. Today we're mostly going to do the sketching and hopefully start on the letter and we'll see it after that. So we had already discussed the idea. The idea is to mostly make half bracer part and a part that goes over your hand, but not too much because as soon as you start going way further over the hand, it will get really difficult to make everything match and line up. So something like a bracer part and then a part that overlaps over your hand. The next best step usually to do is to just sketch it out. Also because we're with two people now and that makes sure that we actually know what both of us are talking about. You actually have rulers. Had rulers. <laughs> so mostly if you want to make sure that things fit multiple people, well, actually measuring things is handy. In this case, I'm the smallest, he's the largest, so we need to make something that is somewhere in the range of what fits both of us. I don't think we want to make a full bracer, do we? I would say no further than like yeah. here. It definitely comes around because we need to have space for the mechanisms, but we indeed don't want to cover the entire arm. So in that case, for me, well, it would be something like somewhere between 10 and 50, which should be enough for the test tubes. If we look at what we want and the space that we're going to need, we need at least, well, 10 is going to be too short. So then 15 sounds more like it. So in this case, if we know that we're going to use 15 centimeters, it's not going to be too long for me. Uh, and in this case, it's the smallest version that counts. And in this case, well, 15 will end up somewhere like that, which still more than fine. How far around do we want to go? Because basically, if we do something that goes all the way around your arms, it's probably going to come to like... No, okay, that's... that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, but still, I mean, here it might actually be the case. So, do we want something that lays on top of it or covers it entirely? I would have it going round more. If you have something running along the edge of your arm, the chance of it catching with movement is much larger than if it runs to, say, here. So in that case, I'm just curious what happens if we measure it for me, which is somewhere around 10. Uh, then it's from here to here, that's 10. Yeah. In, now what would 10 end up for you? It's on the edge. We can do 11. 11 should work <laughs> around the wrist. In this case, it's slightly easier because we have both of us sitting here. We can measure everything as we go. But if you're making stuff, let's say for NPC groups, and you don't know what the actual measurements will be, try and see if you can find the measurements of the body parts of whatever you're working with that you're going to use it for. Google it for what's small uh, and big. Try and see if you can make something adjustable. Uh, but in this case, bracers, they'll be adjustable here, either with elastic or laces. Or uh, uh, a belt. A belt, uh, yes. Adjustable things are always better. So we just translated those measurements to paper patterns, not just the bracer part for the arm, but also the part that will cover the hand. And with these paper patterns, you can basically do a test fit. In my case, well, bracer, it's a bit big, but pretty good. I mean, I still got plenty of space at the bottom. And for Robin, it's perfect. It's what I would usually make for a bracer, pretty much that gap at the bottom. Yeah. The more tricky part of this gauntlet is the hand part, because hands are movable, variable. Hands are weird. Who hands are weird. Who designed these things? So we also made a small hand part, uh, which for me fits pretty well. It covers the entire top, but as you can already see when I put it on my hand, the angle at the bottom is pretty weird. For Robin it's um, <laughs> adorably small. <laughs> 
but not too small, I'd say. I mean, that, that works. But we do have to fix something about this angle. So we already measured it, and I think we're going to add one and a half centimeter on this side, and then have that be a line just back to the other side. And movie magic is absolutely not a few minutes later. We have a revised pattern that fixes the weird angle at the bottom of the wrist. For me, that fits pretty well. I'd say that works. It's still adorably small, but it fits. And it'll just be less of a gap between the top of the hand and the wrist. I think that will work for the gauntlet idea, which means that we can move on to the next step. So let's see how far we can get with what remains of the day. Seeing as we have the main patterns of the bracer and the hand part, we could immediately cut them from the leather I have laying around. We used a 4mm thick leather for the bracer and a thinner 2mm leather for the hand part. With the main parts cut out, we could decide what else we wanted to do with this gauntlet. The main idea is to have a mechanism that carries poison or a potion that we can set to a timer to be injected as a backup resort for when we are downed. In-game, we actually ordered these gauntlets from another character. She had made them in-game, but outside of the game we are obviously making them ourselves. The person who built them in-game can most easily be described as a dwarven steampunk tinkerer, so we do want the gauntlets to eventually reflect that as well. After deciding what direction we wanted to go in, Robin started cutting the decorations for the top of the hand, while I prepared and ended up dyeing the pieces. Luckily, the dye dried quickly enough that Robin could take his parts home without them staining everything. I must say, it's a nice difference crafting with two people on the same table, compared to the solo crafting I usually do. One entire day of crafting with the messy table as a result, I think we've got quite far into the project. Yeah, we've got all the parts that we can do here now. Some unexpected parts. So we can both take our part home and continue crafting. And we still have to order some things and see how that will work out. But so all that remains is for us both to continue working on this on our own. Easy. Let, easy. Let's no, see. No, no time whatsoever. Let's see how similar they still are when we actually meet again at the event. After kicking Robin out of the house, it is time to continue the solo building part of the project. We decided to add a semi-decorative piece on the back of the hand with some gears incorporated in it. So we can start by tracing the location of the raised part on the hand. The stitch line that we marked just now is one that's going to go around the raised part. The reason why we mark this is because eventually we want to stitch it like that. So we also need to mark a stitch line on the raised part. But we can't just mark it there, because we also need to take into account the gears. Because in the locations where the gears are, we can't just stitch it on, because then we can't turn the gears anymore. We had already decided to have the stitch line be 3mm from the edge, because then we can just stitch right through this inner circle of the gear. So that means that we only need to mark the 3mm line between the locations where the gears are. So let's mark those next. To make sure the gears can still turn properly, we cut another template version and cut circles wider than the gears, so they can move around without problem. To make my life a bit easier in the next step, I then glued the pieces together. After which, we can poke holes with a sharp awl, and repeat the gluing process for the raised bit and the top of the hand itself. Now that the glue has dried, it is time to punch the holes all the way through. But I didn't realize a small mistake in my order of operations. I marked these holes for stitching, but previously I also marked the holes around the raised part. But this circle is smaller than that circle, so these stitch lines won't match up properly. But that doesn't matter, it's an easy fix. I'm going to punch all of the holes on the raised part, and then I'm just going to punch all of the holes around it by just lining them out by hand. It doesn't matter that we do have the indents and markings here, we're going to stitch over this, there will be gears in here. I mean, no one is ever going to come up with that close and look between the stitch lines. After that, we poke two holes that we can later use to stitch the gears in and start stitching. We immediately also insert the gears by sliding them into place and stitch through the middle hole. This way, the gear can still turn after being attached. We sew the raised part with a simple one needle stitch, coming up through the outer circle and going back in the inner circle. Of course, we didn't have everything on hand when we started the project a while back, so I just received the package with the last few missing things, such as buckles, leather cord and some tubes. More tubes than we already had. But now that we've got everything, we're both realizing something. The way that we're doing this might not be the handiest. Normally, if you're making something that's going to fit multiple sizes or multiple of the same item meant for different people, it's always the same person that makes it. But we're both kind of stubborn and really wanted to make our own thing or we're both crafters and we want to make our own things. This time they just have to match up. 
But this does give some difficulties. I mean, every time we're stuck, we have to ask the other, do we remember what we said for this measurement? Or did we actually already think about how to do this? And well, the fact that you then have to send a message to someone else means you're disturbed in your process of making the thing. Aside from that, I'm also back at the computer typing my message, getting distracted somewhere else, and then suddenly it's two hours later. No idea what happens to time sometimes. And it's not just this project, it's any craft project in general. There are just steps where I have to do some thinking, and then suddenly I lose all motivation because I don't see what the next step is. And as soon as I see what the next step is, I can just start on that, start working on it, and at some point I see stuff come to life again, and my motivation will be back again. So right now for this project, we've got the part that goes over the arm, we've got the part that will go over the hand, and I've got all the other supplies. I'm just stuck at what the next step is going to be, which means some thinking. And that's difficult. <laughs> but I do have to make a decision, because otherwise this entire project comes to a halt, and right now I've got two weeks left. So Robin and I have been discussing on how to actually attach the hand, well, to the hand. And we think we're going to use a leather strip for it, punch two holes on each side, pull the leather strip through it. The thing is, however, we did not decide on any measurements yet for the spacing of the holes. So you know what? I think I'm actually just going to punch the holes, give the measurements to Robin and hope that he does the same or something. So I determined the location of the four holes to punch. For this, I mostly checked where the gauntlet will end up on the back of my hand and checked if the strap won't run across my finger or uncomfortably past my thumb. As Robin's hand is larger than mine, in this case, if the strap placement is comfortable for me, it will probably fit him too. So in the end, the strap holes were spaced one and a half centimeter apart. And after pulling the core through, we can do a first sort of test fit. And well, I like it. It works as intended, and yup, seeing it like this does give me my motivation back. Then onto the bracer part. To attach the tubes, we had already decided to use strips of one and a half centimeter wide. And with flexible tape, I figured 17 cm should be more than plenty in length. So these were then cut from the thinner leather. Figuring out where the slits for these should be placed was done by laying the tube in position and seeing where the leather ended up. All these measurements were noted and sent over to Robin so he could replicate it. The slits were then made by cutting about a millimeter from the marked line on both sides. Once these were all cut out, we can mark where the stitch lines will end up. We decided to have one continuous stitch line that will also continue slightly further than the end of the straps. Stitching the first line is easy. Insert the straps, make sure they are roughly equal on both sides, then stitch them all the way down with a saddle stitch. For the outside stitch lines, we insert the tubes, tighten the straps, and then pretty much stitch it just like the first one. The nice thing is, the back of the straps is suede-like, so it's super grippy on the tubes, which makes them stay in place very well. The next step is to start cutting the straps that will actually hold the bracer part to our arm. This is one of the steps where actually taking into account who is going to wear this is super important. Because straps are one of the easiest things that you can use to make it wearable for different sizes. Again, I am not that big, so we took my sizes as the smallest size. For that, I held the actual bracer over my arm and measured the distance of the gap. For me, it came down to 7 cm at the wrist and 9 cm at the back. For Robin, it came down to 10 cm gap at the wrist and 12 cm at the back. To make sure it's even more adjustable, we rounded that down and up. So we got to 7 to 11 at the wrist and 8 to 13 gap at the back. After that, I drew these templates in which the straps are going to be adjustable for all of these sizes. First, we're doing the strap at the wrist and at the elbow. The middle strap will come later after we actually attach these. After cutting the straps, we make slots for the buckles. This is done by punching holes at the ends and connecting them. Then it is time to burnish all the pieces. Even though this leather was already relatively smooth, burnishing still makes a big difference. Though I think I'll have to wait a bit before burnishing the undyed leather, so I don't transfer the dye through the leftover tokenola. To be able to change sizes, we punch six holes spaced a centimeter apart on the non-buckle side. Then we can stitch the strap on the buckle. After the stitch line is marked at the end of the strap, the buckle is inserted and the strap folded over. We line it all up and poke the holes all the way through. It doesn't matter if it's very slightly off. We can correct this and the stitching will cover it. The stitching is done single needle and back again, so it is a continuous stitch line. 
With that, the straps are ready to be stitched onto the bracer part. I used the previously made template to mark the location and glue them in place for easier stitching later. Now that the glue is dry, we can do a first quick test fit and yeah, I think it already looks amazing. I'm super happy with it. Determining the length of the middle strap is as easy as measuring this gap. I do see it's bowing out a bit, which is the whole reason why we want three straps. So I need to close it up and then we can measure it. And indeed, as expected, the gap is seven centimeters, right in between the other two straps. So let's get to cutting that one as well. Which means that we can repeat the previous strap cutting, burnishing, buckle stitching and gluing steps to end up with six straps ready for stitching. But before you can grab the needles, I marked the stitch lines and pre-poked the holes. After which, all six straps were saddle stitched on. With this, the basics are done and we can get to making it look fancy. But there were only just two craft days left. To make sure the top of the hand and the bracer part stay together, we wanted to connect them. For this, we fumbled around with a paper template until we found something that worked and cut that out of the thinner leather. Then we stitched it to the bracer part. But then the big question, how can you make sure you can actually move your hand and wrist, make it fit multiple sizes, but also not make the connecting leather bit fold and look ugly? Well, we are making a LARP prop, and especially because this will not be visible, the best material to use is elastic. If we attach the thin leather bit with elastic, it can slide and create more room when needed, but slide back into place when you pull your wrist back. So with a completely just doing something approach, I connected them and well, it works exactly as intended. And last but not least, add the test tubes. With the package Robin sent me, he also included some plastic tubing we wanted to use for the appearance of transferring the fluids. To add these, I drilled holes in the lids of the test tubes. Then we painted the lids of the tubes to make them look less obviously plastic. For this, I started with multiple layers of gold and a bit of drying time between each. So while waiting for the paint to dry, I continued with the next bit of attaching them. The idea for the tubes potentially filled with fluids found me playing around with an old friend. The clear warbler pellets are rubbery and slightly flexible, so they make for a good custom stopper for the tubes. This way, fluid can't get out while we are wearing it, but we can clean the tubes out after the game. Then I punched the holes for the tubes to go into the gauntlets. When the gold layers had dried, I lightly brushed a layer of copper over the gold, followed by a dark brown wash to make it look less new and shiny. When that had dried, I glued the tubes in with some super glue. Simple but effective. I also added a second layer around the outside to make sure no water could come through. Then when that had dried, I pulled the tubes through the leather and screwed the lids on. The tubing was cut short and the stopper added. And last but not least, the tubes were secured with a few stitches. And with that, it is done, right on time for the event. And I am also very curious to see what Robin made of it. So we're actually here now in the forest that is adjacent to the LARP and we've already played for a day. And I must say, I quite like how they turned out. Yeah. Works surprisingly well. <laughs> it's the first time actually trying it on with a costume underneath it, which, you know, one would say you probably want to do that before you actually get to the event. No, but yeah, but, never mind. But here we are. <laughs> Here we are, we totally didn't just finish it like an hour before. No. Five we minutes. We were working on it five <laughs> minutes before we went out the door. In game, we have actually loaded up potions and poisons, but still haven't used them, even though I've been tortured, interrogated, and you know what, everything that happens at a LARP. <laughs> Business as usual, in Business other words. Business as usual, yes. With that, I think we're going to continue LARPing, and see you guys next time.